Hello, my name is Terry and I'm a retired art teacher and I have developed some techniques over the years I think would be very good to pass on because all throughout my teaching career I have found that people, the first thing they say to me is I do not know how to draw or I can't draw a straight line. Well, in this little piece I'm going to show you, a straight line is exactly what you need to do but it doesn't have to be perfectly straight so what I'm going to show you is we are going to do a picture of a dog and a duck using straight lines and then adding some color in between so all you need for this project is a pencil a variety of different colors of markers enthusiasms and ready to learn when we initially talked we were, I talked about learning how to draw a dog or an animal and not worrying about making it perfect but just getting the shape of the animal so it is always a good idea to show a visual of what you're going to draw which is this dog and talk about the nose the neck the body and the legs and the tail and point out things like the different lines that you're going to use. If lines are closer together, it gives the illusion of a dark spot. If they go, hor they're going to go hors uh, vertical. Some will go at an angle. Some will go diagonal, and some will cross. Then we use the shape of a circle to just add in the nose and the eyes. After you explain what we're going to do, it's a good idea to take that picture away because I have found that most people try to copy what I have already drawn. That's not what I want you to do. There are two ways of using this pencil to draw this picture. This is the way that you would use if you were going to write something. You would keep your hand stiff and you would move your pencil or pen up and down in this kind of a motion but the problem with this is it limits you on how much you can actually move that pen or pencil you what you call you are very restricted which may work for this picture here but if I want to do the picture larger I want to keep my hand very loose my pencil very loose and use my whole arm and what that does it allows me to concentrate on the shape rather than the precision of getting it done correctly. I can make large circles, I can make small circles, I can make squiggly lines, and I can do lots of different things. But again, if I do it like this, I am restricted to how far I can move my hand with my pencil. So with that in mind, we're now going to show you how to draw that dog that we just showed you a few minutes ago. So counting is, a, is also used with this. So I'm going to start with the body. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'll stop at 20 knowing that I may have to add some more on the end depending on how the bottom part of the picture goes. Using a diagonal line, I start at the bottom and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If that is the length that I want for the dog's neck, again, another diagonal line going the opposite way. And this time it's a little bit different because now I'm bringing those diagonal lines down to a point. At the end of a point, I'm going to add the circle for the nose. Up here, I'll use one, two, three, one, two, three. This lines for the ears. And inside, I will put a circle for the eyes. I try to put the nose and the eyes in first because that gives the, the vision of what the dog is going to look like. It starts to look a little bit like a dog. Please keep in mind, it's not going to be exactly like if you would draw a perfect picture of a dog. It's just going to give the illusion of a dog, which is very free-forming um, way of doing something to build a little bit of confidence within yourself. 
legs. I'm going to make a series of the legs going down in a vertical line. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Notice I'm counting backwards from six to five to one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two. And then a triangle at the end for a foot. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two. Triangle. Remember I previously told you about the length from the back front leg to the back legs. This can, is not a concern now because I can easily add if I need to as I draw the legs in. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two. Triangle. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two. Triangle. Might want to give just a little bit more in the behind area here. And then a tail. Thinking that I'm going to have a curved line for a tail, it's the same idea. One, two, three, four. Just keep on adding those lines to make that tail long or short or stubby or whatever you want it to be. To add some more color into your picture, highlighters work very well. You can come, come in and you can draw in lines. Highlight some of these areas in, going very quickly again. Notice how I changed my technique that I'm using. I'm not using my whole hand now. I'm kind of like brushing it so that I just have a little bit more control of where the colors are going to go. Obviously, we're never going to see a yellow dog, but this is a very good way of showing how to do something. This is very bright, very visible. Now I can come in with um, some red. I can go in between the lines I already did. This is also called cross hatching. You can go inside and you can work that those lines at a different angle and add just a little bit of more bulk into the picture. And I'm not so much worried about staying and making it perfect. I'm just worried about you know getting the shape of the dog in there. You can finish it by any color you want to. Using the same line techniques, you can go in here and you can put in the place where the dog is standing. And these lines going down here that I'm putting in, those can be used for shadows. Again, they're just diagonal lines. That's all they are. You can come in here and add little highlights if you want to add a little collar. If you want to put a little more color into the nose area. These are all lines that work. They work all together. And probably I'd say within the 10 or 15 minutes that we did here, we kind of have a good little representation of a, of a dog. And if we were to do several more, um, we would change the colors and we would get better as we go along. And everyone's going to be different. They're not all going to be the same. And this could be done with a duck. Let's do the duck in yellow. Just making my lines for the body. There's the neck. There's the round head. There's the beak. And we're going to add in the feet. beak, there's our head, there's our eyes. You can very simply go in and just draw those lines and make draw a duck in there. The more you practice, the more you get better. So Andy Warhol took this basic soup can He kept the Campbell Soup label. He kept the logo in the middle for the most part. 
and he kept the separation of the can between of two colors the red on top and the white on the bottom which are, which is the two focuses of where he's going to make his most significant changes um, the ingredients of the soup here is chicken noodle but that could be changed to something else um, this logo if you look in this really close this logo has a lot of gothic pictures inside of it which is very interesting to take a look at um, when we do this project we are practicing the oval we are practicing vertical line and if we took this apart these two parts right here most kids could see that that would be a number one the number one or the number 11 and then on the bottom we would do another oval again notice I'm using my hand and doing it very freely let's draw one just by you watching okay since I'm doing this with marker it's hard to erase these lines but I would suggest that probably this line in here should be erased so it just has that oval effect for this first can as you saw right here okay what could we do next well using the same technique here I'm going to divide this can in half and most kids will say well how come we don't have the oval back here well because you can't see through the can so this line is not back here we can't it's back there but we can't see it then we use a simple circle and that represents this label right here Okay, what can we do with this can? When I teach this lesson, it's important to tell the kids that Andy Warhol did not make the soup. He did not make the ingredients. He was only looking at the can on the outside label as doing it differently in a fun, more contemporary manner. He did things with soda cans. He did things with shoes. He did things with even lips. Um, if we go to this picture up here, we can see the change from this can to this can. The top, top half is blue. The middle half has the label. And this is chicken noodle soup. This is peanut butter soup. I have not heard of peanut butter soup, so I imagine that this is something a little bit different. Down here, he has a, a line that divides it. Up here they put some little things in here so I tell the kids and this is kind of tricky because a lot of them will say I cannot do the cursive especially at a first or second grade level okay so I would say just do it the best that you can and this represents probably the way youngster would do it and then I would put in here my label and then maybe a different color for, maybe just for some lines down here and maybe different colors on the top maybe some different colors on the bottom very simple way of doing things and I always make sure that the kids if they start with pencil go back and do it with black that just enhances all the colors black next to this yellow makes it a lot more brilliant we are going to start with paint let it with simple brush strokes and then we're going to let that dry and then we're going to come in and we're going to turn the paint strokes into cities it's going to be very simple and it's going to be very fast and it's going to
to be a lot of fun to do. So what I would do initially, which I've done ahead of time to prepare, is take your paintbrush, load it with paint, start at the bottom and go all the way up until it starts to either lose its effect with the color or where you decide you want to stop it. So in here, I put paint on the brush and move it straight up. Do not clean out the brush. Go into, do pick up your next color and add more. Keep doing strokes. Go all the way from the bottom to the up to the top with simple brush strokes going all the way across the paper. Now, a couple things is that when this dries, it's going to start to crinkle up and that's no big factor because we can press this later on. And sometimes the colors that you use, if this is supposed to be a red, it may not come out red. It may become a little bit lighter than what you anticipate when you put it on. And then what I try to do with the kids, and this is kind of fun to do for them, is I say that the picture is already there. You are just like a sculpture taking a piece of soft rock or wood and inside that wood or rock the picture is already there. If you look at this line shape right here the picture is already in here. What do I mean by that? I mean if I take my black marker and outline All of these shapes you can see that this building now has kind of a cascading effect and look to it and I can go in here and I can pick out I can lay out my windows nothing has to be perfect Part of this building right here. I just outline what I already see. The picture is already there. This could be different. Maybe what this is down here. use these markers and you can sharpen up the areas that you want to. I'm starting with black. Now this is interesting right in here because there are different layers in there and you can just pick these out by following their design. Sometimes when you do this becomes like a coloring sheet. You could spend as much time or as little time as you want to finding all these things. I remember one time taking an art class in college and the professor would always come by and say, where do you see those things? I said, well, they're there. You just got to pick them out. But the hard part of doing this as any artwork that you do with the kids in the classroom or adults for that matter is knowing when to stop. Now what does that mean? That means most kids if they were to do something with paint like this they would have a tendency to go to the top and go back over it again and I kind of discourage that because we're not painting a house like outside we're painting a picture so whatever you whatever you did right here with your brush it is almost impossible to reduplicate that exact same thing so you want to leave it there as much as we possibly can let those colors blend in that's the idea of using what I call the dry brush 
not cleaning out the bars, just using what's there to add to the next segment of your picture. Like I said, you can go back and you can spend hours finding different things in here. And then once you notice the difference between these three, these four right here, and these right here, completely different. I bet you we've spent maybe 10 minutes just finding some things. So let me go in here and do two more for you and show you some of the things that I have found. Keeping in mind that I'm looking for a building. Mixed media means you're using two different kinds of materials. You're using paint, you're using markers, pencils. Now, if I was to do this first with watercolors and then go over with the crayon, it's not going to work because the crayon has a resist on it. It's not going not going to work with the uh, that mixed media one does not work too well unless you're painting over the crayon. And in that case, everything that was left white will become the watercolor. Everything that's crayon will be left the crayon. A lot of empty, a lot of empty space back here. So, since I have a lot of vertical lines going here, my horizontal lines then could represent the sky. And the reason I'm doing it like this, going horizontal with these, is because I do not want to confuse these lines with the vertical lines that we used for the buildings. Not to say you couldn't use a few horizontal vertical lines in there, it would be fine. But I would, con I would tend to want to probably do more diagonal lines to give some lightness and darkness of what, what we're doing. And then bring this up as far as you want to go. Um, if you were doing a sunset or sunrise behind it, I'd probably take a yellow marker and highlight the tops of the buildings. Now, the question is, is our primary kids going to see as much as I do? No. But they're going to see enough that they're going to see the change that they can make with these lines into buildings. And that's the whole idea. The broader you make these lines, the more indication it gives that the sun is either coming up or going down slower. Again, if there is a mistake in this picture, who cares? It's all part of the picture. 